Learning about knots is one of those camping skills that I absolutely love to work on. It's super useful when you're at camp to help you set up, but also because it's fun. So today I'm gonna share with you five camping knot mistakes that even experienced campers make. The first mistake that a lot of even experienced campers do is they don't know how to make a really quick, easy, fix anchor in the event where you want to set up a ridge line or a clothing line for example I've seen a lot of times people doing stuff like and I did that forever myself as well doing uh, knots like the bowline for example which is a fantastic knot uh, to make a fix anchor and it's really strong and it'll hold in place very easily and also the knot won't get too tight here so it's easy to undo but there's so many different better options than this I've also seen people just kind of twisting it and doing just a simple over end knot and, and trying to triple knot it as much as they can. And again, that's not, that's not a good solution, especially when you can do a Siberian hitch that I've learned a couple of years ago that's fast to make, super simple, gets you nice and strong anchor attached against the, the, the tree. But more importantly, it's very easy to undo whenever you want to tear down camp. So the Siberian hitch is one of my favorite knots of all time because it's easy to do, it's simple, uh, and once you get the hang of it, it's just so fast. Uh, you'll see at first, uh, you might get tangled a little bit when you do it, but just with a couple of practice, you, you're gonna be able to, to get around to learning it pretty fast. Whenever you work with knots, I always recommend to do the same motion over and over. So for me, I always wrap the, the, the rope from left to right around a tree. And the rope that's in my left hand here is what's gonna be called the static line. And then my working line or my moving line will be in my right hand, which is essentially the end of the rope. To get started with the Siberian hitch, all you have to do is hold the static line and the moving line in your left hand like so. You're gonna take the moving line and wrap it around your fingers and leave it right at the top, right up here. Don't come all the way down. Leave it nice and high like this. And then this is where people get confused a little bit, but essentially your fingers right now are pointing to the right. And what you wanna do is you wanna point your fingers towards the tree as you go underneath the static line and then twist over, go back. As you can see, I'm gonna move my fingers to point to the right again and I'm gonna pinch the, the moving line. And then what I wanna do is with that pinch is I wanna pull that moving line and make a bite on the other side, like so. And once the bite is nice and strong, then you take your static line, then you pull on it, and that'll feed it right to the tree, and then you can really cinch it in place from there. And that gives you a really, really strong anchor uh, that'll hold anything through any weather, to be honest. And when you're ready to tear down camp, a simple pull, and off you go. The next step after you've set up an anchor knot on your first anchor, whenever you're setting up a ridge line, will be to come to your second tree or your second anchor. And typically speaking, you wanna use an adjustable knot for the second knot so that you can really essentially work out the tension that you desire in your ridge line. And one of the more popular knot is to use a trucker's hitch that, because it really allows you to, to give nice tension uh, to your ridge line, it allows you to crank it, and uh, it just works really well, it's super simple. The challenge with it though is that when you come to tie it together here, in order to not lose your tension in your ridge line, you have to kind of pinch it, and then work your, your second knot here. Not the end of the world, but over the winter, my buddy Pierre actually taught me a new trick with this knot that I thought was absolutely clever. So you take your regular trucker's hitch, like so and instead of feeding it once through the loop you go right again and you feed it a second time and now you have an auto locking trucker's hitch so you can pull on it crank it as much as you want and it holds in place with very very little um, tension needed in my hand here I can just kind of crank it a little bit and then it, it holds pretty well on its own too. And now to tie it, it's super easy to pinch because it really doesn't slide. And I can put a bite here and now I have a really, really strong ridge line 
uh, that I did with a trucker's hitch. So let's review the trucker's hitch. It's a very simple knot, super useful when you're out camping. I typically use it myself to set up uh, ridge lines when I want them really, really tight. But it's also a really useful knot at home. You want to tie a canoe to a trailer or to your roof rack. This can be a really, really useful knot for that. So the way it works is you obviously feed, feed it around the tree as usual. You've got your static line, you've got your moving line. You're gonna take your static line here and you're gonna give yourself a little bit of loose. And what you do is you're gonna do a loop like this where you can put your fingers right through it and you're gonna go grab the static line over it and feed it through, feed a bite through so that it gives you a loop like this. Then you're gonna feed your rope through that loop to make yourself a, a crank. Now that you've fed it once, that's the regular trucker's hitch, but to do the self-locking trucker's hitch, you feed it once more through the loop and now you have yourself a really nice strong trucker's hitch that also self-lock and you barely have to hold on to it to be honest and it'll stay in place. When you want it to come off, you can, you can bring it out. You'll still need to tie it here obviously for safety purposes, but it's just fun to be able to work the tension without having to worry about it coming back. Now for the third tip, what I want to show you guys is to use the power of toggles when you're working with knots. So in this case here I have a trucker's hitch with a self-locking mechanism and I want to really crank this as much as possible so if you find a toggle just on the forest floor which is just a small stick and then you wrap the rope around it now you've got yourself a really nice handle so that you can go and crank this this up without hurting your hands you have so much more leverage by using a toggle like this and then you can now undo it tie this up properly right here and you're gonna have the tightest ridge line you've ever seen. <laughs> so for the fourth mistake is using a prosthetic knot, essentially not at its fullest of its cap capabilities. And a prosthetic knot, all it is is 10 to 12 inches of rope that you loop on itself, you tie with an overhand knot, very simple, so now you have yourself a loop. And what you do is you put it over a ridge line like this, you put the loop like this, then you take the knot and then you feed it onto itself once and then you feed it on twice again. And now you make it nice and flat and then you have a knot like this. And what's neat about this is now you have an anchor point here that's really easy to move up and down the line if you hold like, if you just push at the knot but the, the theory behind it is that if it's pulled like this, it holds in place. And going along with tip number three, the way you would use this is with the power of a toggle where you put now this anchor through the loop of your tarp. Use a simple toggle. The toggle trick is one it is one that I really wish I would have known earlier. And now you with because of the toggle, you can really make this nice and tight and it'll hold in place really pretty well. Here's the problem though, and I don't know if it's a rope problem or if it's just uh, a double prosthetic knot like that is not as strong, is that I find that although it can and will hold a, a decent tension, I still find that it slides. So what I've found is if you do a triple prosthetic knot, that does go away. So all you gotta do is you feed it once in, twice in, and then you're gonna go for a third time and my prosthetics are a little small for that, so you can make yours a little longer if you want to. But now if you have a three time, so a triple prosthetic knot in that you make nice and flat so it doesn't move, okay? Then you feed it the same way through the loop and you use a toggle. Now you have an anchor that really doesn't move at all. Like I'm talking like you have to really push on it really strong and you would do this on either side of your tarp and now you can adjust it as strong as you want it and it stays in place. The next mistake I see even experienced campers make is to use a bowline knot to attach a guy line to a tarp or to, uh, to a tent. Although the bowline is a great little knot and it works really, really well, there's nothing wrong with doing this. It's a bit more of a finicky knot to make, a bit more tricky, but also uh, when you're in the winter time and your hands are cold, it's just, it requires a lot of dexterity. And one thing that I just found out not that long ago, and I don't know the name of that knot exactly, but if you just make a bite with your guy line and all you do is you feed the bite through the loop and then you take both 
end out and then you just feed it onto itself and then you lock it like this. Believe it or not, just by doing this like this, it will hold even in the toughest conditions and you can essentially really rely on this to, to set up your guy lines. It's very simple to get undone too at the end because there's no nut, it's all friction that holds everything together here and it's just really fast. Now that we've reviewed your knot game, the next logical step is to apply it and learn how to do proper shelters so that you can shelter yourself from the element and that's exactly what I do in this video right here. So go ahead and click on that and I will see you as always in the next video. Peace.